Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about Market Power. In this video we are going to discuss the concept of market power and how this relates into firm activity in a market structure. So first off a definition of market power. This is the ability of a firm to raise price above a perfectly competitive level. So raise price above its marginal cost. And in this case the ability of a firm to do this depends on its elasticity of demand. For a firm with an elastic demand curve, this is when the price goes up and quantity demanded drops proportionately more, its market power is quite constrained, so they don't have that much market power. However, when a firm has an inelastic demand curve, it can raise its price and lose proportionately less customers, in which case it has market power. And we are going to examine this through looking at uh, two different types of markets. In the first market, we have an individual who sets up a fashion shop, except this has many substitute uh, firms in that market, in which case, because there are so many competitors, the more competitors you have, the more elastic your demand curve tends to be, in which case your market power is quite small and the level of profits that you earn are quite small as well. So market power reduces with the number of firms in the market. We can compare this to an alternative structure where we have a firm owner on the right hand side over here whose supermarket grows quite, quite big and it dominates the area and quite large firms with less substitutes tend to have quite a bit of market power ability to increase the price of the product. So market power tends to increase with the size of the firm and the dominance of it in the market. Okay, so we'll move on now to market structures and market power to a large degree determines the type of market structure that your firm is operating in. So if we look at one extreme, which is perfect competition, what we see at this extreme of market structures is firms that operate in very large markets where there are many, many uh, buyers and sellers in the market. So that's a key characteristic. Uh, these would be pretty basic products like agricultural goods where freedom of entry is very easy for new firms entering the market. They produce identical products, so there's no branding in this case. Every product is the same. And because of this, the demand curve is perfectly elastic. There's no ability to raise price because all customers would be lost in that case. And this makes that firm a price taker. They take the price in the market, which means no market power. If we move on from here to a competitive but slightly less competitive market than perfect competition, we get monopolistic competition. And in this case, we have again quite a number of firms in that market. So we will say many firms in the market who are competing with one another. And this could be the situation in restaurant market, fast food, cereal producers, where there is freedom of entry. So new firms can set up in this market the key aspect of it is that they differentiate their product or they brand it. So they spend time uh, making their product look different than other companies. And because of this, they face a downward sloping demand curve because this says that they can increase their price without losing all of their customers. So they have some market power in this case, depending on the amount of money spent on the brand and the branding success. So monopolistic competition have some market power. The next market type up is called oligopoly and in an oligopoly what you have is just a small number of firms. So a small few competitors in a monopoly. This might be for example mobile providers, the airline industry or supermarkets where you have certain barriers to entry and we'll discuss these in about a minute's time in this video. Certain barriers that block firms setting up here. We also have, because there are a small number of firms, interdependence. They undertake strategic behavior based on what the other firms are doing. So they react to one another in terms of pricing and so on. This gives it a kink demand curve if it's a competitive oligopoly or a downward sloping demand curve if it is collusive, if firms operate together. And finally, 
In this market here, market power ranges between a lot in terms of a collusive oligopoly to very little if it is a kink demand curve competitive oligopoly. Finally, we will move on to the opposite extreme where market power is the highest and this is called a monopoly market structure. And a monopoly is a market structure with just one firm or one very dominant firm operating in this market. So this could be Irish Rail or big railway company. It might be Facebook in terms of social media where you have dominance. You might have smaller companies, but one big firm is dominant. The reason that they are dominant usually is pretty large barriers to entry and we'll be looking at this quite soon and in this case there are no close substitutes so you have a monopoly because you don't have competitors in the market or very few. This gives it a downward sloping demand curve so these firms have the ability to raise price and reduce their quantity, make their products scarce, increase their profits and finally because of this they have quite a bit of market power the ability to raise price so monopolies have the largest amount of market power across these market structures so market power changes across the market types very little in terms of perfect competition and as we move right across this uh, market structure here we see that monopoly has the highest amount now why would monopoly have the highest amount this would be due to barriers to entry so what would you have in certain markets you would have brand loyalty you would have pioneering brand advantage in some markets such as apple who came to market first with the new smartphone the iphone and this gives it an awful lot of market power and brand loyalty. You can have companies that can produce at the lowest unit average cost of production. And if you can do this at a lower cost than other companies, this can act as a barrier to entry as well. You can keep them out by producing at a low price. The next one is control of a key factor of production or technology. If you own, for example, a key factor such as lithium, and the ability to produce better batteries in electric vehicles, you will uh, be able to obstruct companies coming in. There's also legal protection acts as a barrier in pharmaceutical markets, for example. You have a patent on a new innovation, a new drug, in which case firms can't enter the market, so a legal barrier. You can have uh, companies that merge with others, happens in pharmaceutical and digital companies quite a bit the merging of big companies so that they can keep out any competitors and finally what you have is economy of the scope and network externalities where it's cheaper to actually produce two or more goods in a market or where the utility increases with more users in the market such as Facebook etc. So these can act as large barriers to entry which means it's hard for other firms to compete which increases the market power. Now how would we measure that market power across markets? We call this measurement device a learner index and what it is is it compares the price for product, the selling price to its marginal cost MC and we divide that by price. The larger the divide between price and marginal cost the more market power a firm has. So markup of price over marginal cost is market power and this goes away from allocative efficiency. So the higher the price over marginal cost, the less efficient the firm is. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.